one, right? Okay. So lesson seven, infinite limits and limits at infinity. As with everything we've done this unit, have you noticed just because we moved on to next lesson, we're still talking about a lot of the same stuff, right? It's just, you know, different pieces of it, taking a little farther, whatever. So you're going to know some of this stuff already. There's going to be similarities. So in our first lesson on understanding limits, you were confronted with these two situations. So infinite limits and limits at infinity. Here we begin to compare and contrast the behavior of the functions as they approach infinity, as well as functions that tend towards infinity in certain circumstances. So I'm really focusing on the infinities. So example one, use the graphs of f, and g is on my next screen, it's down at the bottom of your page, shown below, to compare and contrast behaviors. You know what? I need this all on one screen, don't I? Yep. Forgot about that. Well, time to shrink. No, it's just, here, you know what? I don't have to have the top of that screen showing anymore, do I? Mm -hmm. I don't even have to have that showing. There we go. How's that? Looks great. Okay. Change it on the fly here. So let's look at these and then we'll talk. So the first one, okay, pay attention. F, G. <laughs> The limit as x approaches 4 from the left of f. Yes? Going whoosh. While we're here, let's do the question right underneath it. The limit as x approaches 4 from the right of f of x. You there? Okay, let's go down and do g. The limit as x approaches 1 from the left on G. Negative. Whoosh. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. Yeah, guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm still filling in the boxes up top, but I'm using the graph down below because that's how it's set up. Just to be confusing. You can tell I didn't catch that this morning when I was loading the slides and zooming them all in and everything I would like to. I didn't look into it at that moment to remember, oh, yeah, it's all one page. Limit as x approaches 1 from the right on g. Okay. Your discovery. What are we noticing here? There's some asymptotes. Okay. This is all about the vertical asymptotes here, isn't it? Okay. Um, this vertical asymptote, and this is one of those things if you know the limits, but you don't have the physical graph. The fact that, oh, the limit from the left is going to positive infinity, the limit from the right is negative infinity, or vice versa, that's your indication. Oh, there's probably a vertical asymptote there, right? Like, if you don't, if you just have the limits and you're trying to draw the graph, i got to think vertical asymptote, okay? So um, my what I have written in for the discovery part, a vertical asymptote occurs if one-sided limits are unbounded. So unbounded meaning going to infinity or negative infinity. And in all honesty... If they're both going to positive infinity or both going to negative infinity, that's still a vertical asymptote. So one side limits, which is what we just did here, right? We didn't look at both. And they are unbounded, meaning going to infinity. So what did I just say? A vertical asymptote. Occurs. If one-sided limits are unbounded. Okay. We have a box here in the middle to fill in. An infinite limit, which is what we were just doing. That was as x is approaching some number, right? Mm -hmm. And so an infinite limit is when as x approaches some number, the limit will approach either positive or negative infinity. So basically the vertical asymptote. Excuse me. So I'm going to say as x approaches c,
the limit will approach either positive infinity or negative infinity. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to put it in parentheses right here. Vertical asymptote. Okay? So infinite limit. That's when the limit is equal to an infinity. Okay? And those you're going to be looking at vertical asymptotes in that case. <clears throat> You start filling in the bottom boxes yet? As x approaches negative infinity on f of x, so f is my top graph. As x approaches negative infinity, what y value are we approaching? Negative two. That hmm, horizontal asymptote of negative 2. Mm -hmm. um, where's my other f one? Right below it. The limit as x approaches positive infinity of f of x is also approaching that horizontal asymptote of negative 2. Limit as x approaches negative infinity on g of x. Negative infinity. Mm -hmm. Okay. As it's moving infinitely left, it is moving infinitely down. Because that's not a horizontal asymptote, is it? It's a diagonal asymptote. Okay. Slant asymptote is what we call them. Okay. What about as x approaches positive infinity on g? It's going up to positive infinity. Okay. So, as you can tell, this section obviously talks about not just horizontal asymptotes, but also the slant asymptotes. And it all has, it's still part of what we refer to as in behavior usually. But what's our... What do we talk about here? This is as x approaches either positive or negative infinity, yes? And what was happening here? What was the limit approaching? It was either approaching a, a y value, so the horizontal asymptote, or infinity or negative infinity, so unbounded. So let's see. How do I want to write this? I have a lot here that I have written. As x approaches, I'm just going to write positive negative infinity. Not that you'd ever see positive negative infinity in one piece, but, um, I'm, you know, it works for this. The limit will approach the limit will approach, got to work on spelling, geez, a y value Or will be unbounded. Okay. When it's the y value, I'm just going to put here in parentheses below it. That is the horizontal asymptote, right? The unbounded will be the slant asymptote. I feel like I have the exact same thing written for the next box. So a limit at infinity. A limit at infinity. So then we're talking about as a limit approaches infinity. And we've already, yeah, I have the exact same thing here. As x approaches plus or minus infinity, the limit will approach a y value or will be unbounded. Who's drawing the arrow? I was thinking about it. That's what I did. Okay. Saves us a little bit of time, doesn't it? Yes. And the layers. I'm kind of surprised I don't have two different things written in there, so I don't know if I goofed that up or... Oh, well. I don't know. I mean, it's really... I mean, it is the same thing, so... Okay. Moving on. 
In pre-calculus, you learn some basic truths about rational functions. So, let's see if you guys can fill these in. When a factored factor canceled from the denominator. <laughs> when a factor canceled from the denominator, a blank occurred. When a factor would not cancel from the denominator, a blank occurred. What type? Okay. So, the first blank is whole. When a factor can cancel, when we have a factor, we can cancel top and bottom. That's a whole. When nothing cancels and that denominator equals zero, that is a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote. So close. Okay. So confused. What's it? Previous equations. I think are these the equations for the graphs, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. But the point is, we're not supposed to be looking back at the graphs. We're supposed to use the, use the equation now. Okay. So if we're going to look at this first one, let me x approaches four from the left. Well, if I had to guess, if we put four in on top and four in on bottom. Both are going to equal zero or something like that. So. So then do we factor them? We should try and factor, yes. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. So now, with this in mind, the limit as x approaches 4 from the left. Now, okay. One step before we actually do the factoring. What can I do first on the top to make life a little bit better? Okay. Okay, I'm going to do that here so I don't have to waste a step here. If we factor out the negative 2, you can't divide it away. I still need that negative 2. It's still part of the deal. It's x squared minus x plus x plus x minus 6. Okay, so now can I factor that on top of the fraction? Yeah. Negative 2 stays out front. X and X. 3 and 2. Plus minus. Yeah. Back to your denominator. X and X, yeah. 4 and 2, minus, minus. Okay. Sorry, you're just hearing how my brain, you know, goes through it. What do we notice? Those two. Okay, those two lovelies cancel. And so now, as we work with this, we are working with the limit as X approaches 4 from the left of negative 2 times X plus 3 over X minus 4. We have a vertical asymptote at four, three, four. Sorry. Okay. Vertical asymptote at four because that's where my denominator will equal and zero, at right? Two. Okay. A hole at two that's going to be irrelevant on this part of the problem, though. Dang. Because why do I not care about the two? How do you know there's a hole at two? Oh. Okay. There's a hole at two because these guys canceled. There's a, denom a vertical asymptote at four because this is still here. Because we are approaching 4, that matters, doesn't it? Okay. So knowing that there's a vertical asymptote, okay, right there, you're analyzing. That's what we're doing here. Now, from that point, well, if there's a vertical asymptote, you got 50-50 shot. It's either approaching positive 50 or negative 50. But here's the deal. We have to know which. So if we're approaching 4 from which side? The left. The left. Put a number in that represents that. And think about what happens. So, and again, this can be done without a calculator. Okay? So if we do negative 2 
And did I even do something as basic? I guess that you have 3.99 in my notes. Could we just, could we do like one? You can't one. do. One is gonna, you need to use a decimal. Okay. It has to be closest to four. Yeah. Oh, but. Sorry. So. I have 0.99. But, I mean, here's the deal. We don't even have to have these specific answers to what I'm getting ready to do to be able to do this. Okay? We just are looking for kind of like what's trending here. So when I look at 3.99 plus 3, that's almost 7. seven. It's 6.99 times negative 2. Negative 14. So it's almost negative 14. It's negative 13. Okay, and actually, in my if I look at my notes, I just have negative 2 times 6.99, so it's going to be some negative value there. 3.99 minus 4 is going to be negative 0 0.01, yes? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the deal. I have a number on top that's going to be getting technically bigger, right? Mm -hmm. This number on bottom is getting smaller, smaller, closer to zero. So when that situation is happening, that is an infinity. infinity situation. In other words, basically, right here, it was what? Negative 14 over zero? Mm -hmm. That right there means, okay, it's going to be an infinity. I mean, you can kind of see that. And, you know, this is my proof. Now, in this situation, though, what's a negative divided by a negative? So this is going to trend to positive infinity. Okay. And this is why we have to kind of think this through. Okay. I mean, right here, that negative 14 divided by zero, that's our does not exist. I'll be honest. I see a zero in the denominator and a constant in top. My brain says infinity. It's just a matter of is it positive or negative infinity. Okay. So while I can't tell you 14 divided by 0 is infinity, you need to kind of think that way. Okay? Now, what's the catch that could have gotten us in trouble here? This would have made me think negative infinity here until I thoroughly analyzed it. Okay, now, flip back to your previous page. Does this match the answer on the graph? Yep. Okay? I mean, that's our proof right now. That's our checking ourselves. This is kind of the, here's the equation, the graph. This is how we would do it if I don't have the graph, though. Okay? I like this better. Okay, shall we try B then? Yeah. Because B is going to be as we approach 4 from the right. right. Now, I'm going to jump because we've already done all the factoring, right? So even though it says that, I'm really just thinking negative 2 times x plus 3 over x minus 4. Okay. Now, in all honesty, from the here's something I know. There's only a single x minus, x minus 4 factor in the denominator, yes? Mm -hmm. It's not a squared, is it? Mm -hmm. It's just x minus 4. I know then that my either side of the asymptote are going to go opposite directions. Mm -hmm. So if this one is positive infinity, well, this one's going to be negative. Now, when that changes is if this denominator factor is raised to an even power, then they go the same way. Okay? So, now, can you prove this, though? Yes. Okay, we just discussed that we think it's going to be negative infinity. Can we prove it? Well, plug in a number from the right. Negative 2 times 4.01 plus 3 over 4.01 minus 4. So you end up with negative 2 times 7.01 over 0 0.01. This is kind of like negative 14 over 0 again, yes? Mm -hmm. But this time it's a negative divided by positive, isn't it? We still have a number on top that's getting bigger divided by a number on bottom that is getting infinitely smaller. Okay, or even just the number on top that's staying, you know, and so this is going to be negative infinity. Catching on a little bit? Mm -hmm.
Okay. Um, in order to talk about C, we should probably have it factored. Hmm. Why do I not have it factored in my notes? I don't know why I didn't factor it. That's one. Whoops. Oh, you can't? Huh? That's why I don't have it factored in my notes. Huh? There we go. Obviously, I had not gotten to that part. I was just, and I'm just doing what you guys would do. What are we going to assume? It's going to factor. And then we say, oh, well, okay, never mind. It doesn't factor. It can be. Okay. The bottom you can, but it's not going to matter at that point. Does that, I mean, do you see what I'm saying? Yes, you can say that bottom is 2 times x minus 1. I'm good there. But it's not going to fully matter because nothing's going to cancel, right? Mm -hmm. But if you would rather think this, and there is one advantage I can point you to here in a moment when I get there. It's not 2x squared, is it? x squared minus 2x plus 5, and it is 2 times x minus 1. You don't have to do that, though, because nothing's canceled. The advantage of factoring is something will cancel. Advantage failed here. Okay? What now? She's just talking. I'm making sure that she's not thoroughly confused, though. Okay, you're good? You're caught up? Okay, so we are approaching 1 from the left. So what kind of value are you trying to think about plugging in? Okay. So if I use... X equals 0 0.99. Okay, here's what, I need you, what we need to figure out. Is when we put 1 in on the denominator, we know it's something divided by 0, yes? Mm -hmm. We know that there is a vertical asymptote at 1. So I know that this answer is either pause infinity or negative infinity. You got a 50-50 shot, but I don't want you just guessing. Okay, so... When you think about putting 0.99 in, or even just think about 1 for the moment on top, there's going to be 1 squared minus 2 plus 5. What kind of value are you getting? My bad. I'm positive. Positive. A positive, correct? <laughs> yeah. I mean, because essentially when you put in 1 itself, you're getting 3. If I put in 0.99, is it going to change that much? No, I'm going to be getting a positive. So we know we're going to be getting a positive. Over, okay, now 2 times 1 minus 2, that gives me 0. Yeah. So I don't want you to think that. Now I need you to think, okay, what if I put a number just a teeny bit smaller than 1? So 2 times 0. 0.99, so that's going to be a little bit smaller than 2. And then I subtract 2, yeah. and that's going to be a negative. Because 1 already equals 0, so no, 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 I thought 2 times 0.99 would be over 2. No. You're doing 2 times a number less than 1. If 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times a number less than 1 is less than 2. Right. Okay? <laughs> I can't do basic math anymore. It's just... It's I mean, difficult. if we want to get specific, 2 times 0.99 is 1.98. If you want to get specific, okay? So it's just, you know, 1.98 minus 2, that's going to be a negative. What do we know about positive divided by a negative? A negative. It's going to be a negative. So this is going to be negative infinity. infinity. Okay. How am I understanding this? I don't know. And I essentially, going on, but I can't do basic math anymore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. The D. Now the difference. I mean, you can kind of see where we're going here. The difference is now we're approaching from the right. So now, what are we going to use? Some type of number slightly bigger than 1. So if you plug in on top, it's still going to be around 3, yes? And it's going to be a positive. That didn't change. On bottom, it's 2 times 1.01, .01, so 2.02 .02 minus 2 is a very small positive. Positive divided by a positive is a... 
of Hazu Fetty. Now, part of the point I'm trying to make is you can plug these numbers in without a calculator, right? We're just kind of using number sense. Trying. Trying to use number sense. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> Until we make the silly mistakes and the number sense goes out the window, we get all confused. But we're trying there. And these answers, if you turn back to the previous graphs, they match, don't they? I hope. Okay. So, um, definition justification of vertical asymptotes. So, first of all, case one, if you have a non zero number divided by a zero. So, something like the three divided by zero, the negative 14 divided by zero that we're just working with. What situate, what is occurring there? That is a vertical asymptote. Okay, so that's the idea of what we're just doing, like 14 divided by 0, 3 divided by 0. Those are vertical asymptotes happening. Okay, does it approach positive or negative infinity? Now, 0 divided by 0. Yeah. Try again. Okay, <laughs> try it again, D and E, right? But what is likely happening here? And technically, well, no, we didn't have any. Okay, um, if you're getting 0 over 0, there's probably, hopefully, a factor you can cancel, which, is a whole. which makes it a whole. Okay. So this is likely the location of a hole, or in other words, some type of point discontinuity. Okay. Um, limit definition justification of a vertical asymptote. Okay. But limit definition. So how do we show a limit? Yeah, so this is, you'd have to do the limit as X approaches C. I think I have this as two separate ones. From one side. So limit as X approaches C of a function. And that's going to either equal positive or negative infinity. And then if you can also show, or I should say or there, the limit as x approaches c from the right of f of x. And you get that equal to plus or minus infinity. Okay? So if you have x approaching c and it equals to an infinity, so this is what we call unbounded, right? Okay, unbounded behavior when it approaches infinity, then we that's your proof that x equals c is an asymptote. Specifically a vertical asymptote. Don't do what I just did there and just say asymptote. I know we get guilty of just saying, oh, there's an asymptote there. But when you're doing anything official and writing it down, state what kind of asymptote. Okay. So. Okay. Well. So, okay. I'm officially stopping there. But here's what... See if you can factor our next example. Nope. No. You didn't even try. You can't factor the top. No, you can't. You can't factor the top. You can't factor the bottom. PAC, two times negative. Five. You can factor the top. Oh. Now, now, I wouldn't use product. I mean, that shows you that it's factorable, but I would kind of use the factor the denominator and see. That's what I'm thinking. You know, try it. Practice that technique of factor the okay. denominator and then see if you can just kind of do a guess and check to factor the numerator. We'll talk about it on Monday. Monday.